first thing you want to do is make sure you have all the components listed on the packing slip. An installation booklet has been included which provides step-by-step -step installation instructions for installing and assembling the 2914 machine. The track should be supported by an overhead structure with pipe batten, rigid points, or ceiling brackets. If the track was shipped from ADC, it has been pre-punched with 3 8 inch holes for the spindles and idlers. If the holes are not present, you will need to drill 3 8 inch holes at their locations. Make sure you have the tracks overlap correctly. The live end section must be in front of the dead end section or on the outside of the curve. Drill 3 8 inch holes at both track ends at the overlap for the 1409 end stops. Slide the dead end pulley on the end of the dead end section of track and secure it with a 1 half inch wrench or socket. Divide the single carriers in half and slide one half of them into the dead end and one half onto the live end track sections at the center overlap. Install the master carrier on the dead end half of the track only. Install the 1409 to the pre-drilled holes at the track center overlap. Secure the end stops to the track with a half inch socket. Locate the 1458 spindles and remove the nut and star washer from the unit. Attach the 1458 spindles to the track using the pre-drilled or pre-punched 3 8 inch holes. Make sure the spindles are on the inside of the curve. Secure the spindles with a 1 half inch socket or wrench. Make sure you use all the spindles supplied with the system. Locate the 1459 spindles and 1460 idlers. These components will be installed on the dead end track section. Remove the nut and star washers from the 1460 and 1459 spindle and idler. Remove the bolt from the 1460 idler only. The 1459 and 1460 share a common mounting bolt. Install the 1459 on the inside of the curve and the 1460 on the outside of the curve using the same bolt. Secure the components to the track using the star washer and nut provided with either of the units. Tighten the bolt with a 1 half inch open end wrench. Install all of the 1459 and 1460 spindles and idlers supplied with the system. Locate the knockoff master carrier. This is the one with the ramp on it. And slide it onto the live end track section as shown. You will need to remove the 1409 end stop from the live end track section before installing the master carrier. Reinstall the 1409 after the master carrier has been installed on the track. Two track model limits were provided with the system, one for the open position and one for the closed position. The open limit is mounted to the track in front of the stacked carriers. The closed limit is mounted at the center overlap. 
Mount the open limit switch to the track in front of the stack carriers. Loosely secure it to the track with a half inch socket. It will need to be repositioned at a later time. Make sure the limit rocker is positioned as shown. The knockoff master carrier must trip the switch when it passes. Next, install the closed limit at the overlap. Allow room after the switch and before the end stop. The master carrier will coast a bit after the motor shuts off. Make sure the limit switch rocker arm is positioned such that the master carrier can trip the switch when it passes in both directions. If the machine is a suspended mount, attach the support chains and clevis to the forged eye bolts supplied with the machine. If the machine is ceiling mounted, it will be equipped with ceiling mounting brackets. The machine must be supported by an overhead structure. The machine attached to the track for alignment of the operating cable only. The track does not support the machine. In preparation of attaching the machine to the track, loosen the bolts of the machine mounting bracket but do not remove them. Next lift the machine into position, sliding it onto the track. Secure it to the track by tightening the bracket mounting bolts. Attach the support chains or ceiling brackets to the overhead structural support. Loosen but don't remove the drive wheel thumb screw. The drive wheel should spin freely. Place the coil of cable on the floor below the machine and thread one end over the idler pulley and into the back groove of the wheel as shown. Continue threading the cable around the tension pulley and into the front groove of the drive wheel as shown. Continue the cable around the drive wheel and towards the track. Next pull the cable towards the 1458 spindles and then thread it between the upper wheel and the cable guard of the 1458 spindles. Continue threading through all of the 1458 spindles toward the track center overlap. When you reach the overlap, thread the cable through the inner or dead end end stop and into the closest cable clamp of the dead end master carrier. Secure the cable at the master carrier. Take the remaining end of the cable coil and thread it through both cable clamps of the knockoff master carrier. Do not tighten the clamps. Continue the cable around the outside of the 1458 spindles and toward the center overlap. When you reach the center overlap, thread the cable through the end stop of the live end track section and continue the cable to the 1460 idlers mounted to the dead end track section. Continue the cable to and around the dead end pulley. Next, continue the cable around the outside of the 1459 spindles.
Finally, thread the cable through the remaining cable clamp of the master carrier on the dead end track section. Pull as much slack as possible out of the system and then secure the cable to the master carrier with the cable clamp using a flathead screwdriver. Slide the knockoff master carrier into position at the center overlap and then secure it to the operating cable using the cable clamps of the master carrier. Secure the drive wheel to the driving dog using the thumb screw provided. The open and close limit switch wires are connected to terminals 910 and 1112 of the control box terminal strip. Connect the limit switch wires from the open limit switch to terminals 9 and 10 of the control box terminal strip. Also connect the ground wire from the control box ground lug to the limit switch ground. After connecting the wires in the control box, move to the open or stacked limit switch. Open the limit switch by removing the two bolts holding the cover to the limit switch base. Connect the limit switch wires to terminals number 1 and number 2 of the open limit switch. Also connect the ground wire to the ground lug of the limit switch. Reassemble the limit switch making sure that the actuator rocker arm is in the proper position. Next, we're going to work on the closed limit switch, or the limit switch located at the track center overlap. Connect the closed limit switch wires to terminals 11 and 12 of the control box terminal strip. Remove the cover of the closed limit switch. Connect the closed limit wires to terminals 3 and 4 of the limit switch. Also connect the ground wire to the ground lug. Reassemble the limit switch. Make sure if the actuator rocker arm is positioned properly. Connect the power source to terminals 1 and 2 of the control box terminal strip. Be sure and connect the power source ground wire to the box's ground lug. The system can now be operated. When initially testing the system, keep one finger on the stop button to shut the machine off in the event limit switches fail to operate. Run the system several times and make sure the limit switches are operating correctly. Finally, add additional tension to the system by adjusting the tension pulley.